Taylor, and I am the program manager over our over the UAMI SBA RIT contract working with UAMI. So um, many of you have been serviced under this contract already. Our executive director, Talinda, was running just a little bit behind, but I think that she has made her way in. So um, glad that everybody's here today. Talinda, would you like to say hello or you just want me to keep running with it? You're doing a great job, JT. You take it away. All right, Linda. Well, we're very fortunate. Uh, we've engaged a closer partnership with our local SBA representatives. So today we're very honored to have the Utah District Director Marla with us, as well as District Council John. And they've offered to come on today and give us some very valuable information for um, funding available uh, that's just been extended through May. So this is some fantastic programs coming out, it being extended out to everyone. Uh, so we're very grateful for their time and their willingness to come out and help. If you please, if you don't mind, if you'll post your name and your the company you're with in chat, just so we have a record as this was a kind of a quick send out. We didn't get a registration set up, but if you can put that in there so we have a log and then please, if you have any questions or any additional information you need after going through this, please reach out to me directly. Um, I'll make sure that my information is posted in chat as well and you can follow up with me and I can help as needed. So uh, with that said, John and Marla, I'll turn the stage over to you. Hey, good afternoon, everyone. And thank you for uh, joining us and for uh, UME for hosting us this afternoon. We really do appreciate it. Um, I'm Marla Tron, I'm the district director here for the SBA in Utah. And I have with me uh, John Gigi, the deputy district director. Um, I'm going to present on our funding programs um, for COVID and then uh, do want to offer enough time for uh, Q&A at the end and, and John will help, uh, respond to some of those questions that come in via the chat. So um, next slide, let's go ahead and get started. Um, these are our various SBA COVID uh, programs that we have to offer. Um, most of you have already heard about the Paycheck Protection Program. Um, that is being administered by our uh, vendors here across the state. And um, one second, I just want to. Okay. Um, those are being administered by the uh, SBA lenders across the state. When we started um, pro right prior to COVID hitting, uh, we had about 60 SBA lenders that we worked with across the state. And now we have over 435 that are uh, administering um, the Paycheck Protection Program loans uh, to all of you. So um, we're pleased to see such a large presence of lenders across the state doing uh, SBA loans. Um, we also have our economic injury disaster loans, or what we call idle, um, and we have a targeted idle advance. Um, some folks call that a grant. It goes up to ten thousand dollars, and I'll talk about that a little bit later. We also are about to launch our shuttered venue operator grant um, that rolls out on April eighth. Uh, and then we're getting ready to um, set up a restaurant revitalization grant that will be rolling out shortly after the uh, shuttered venue operator grant. Um, we've also made some changes, subsidy payments um, on existing SBA loans, uh, as well as enhancements to our regular lending programs, our 7A loans and our 504 loans uh, and the micro loans. And then down at the bottom there, you can see uh, entrepreneurial assistance. So those are our resource partners. Those are funded by the SBA, uh, the Small Business Development Center Network located throughout the state. There's 15 centers. Um, and then the, we have two women's business centers, one in Salt Lake and one down in Cedar City. Um, and th those um, resource partners provide free counseling to uh, any small business out there. And uh, SBA designates a small business as anything under 500 employees. Okay. So, uh, hold on one sec. We're, we're stuck. Is it stuck? Okay, here we go. <laughs> so, 
Economic Aid uh, Act provided um, uh, increased appropriations to small businesses of 325 billion. About 285 was uh, allocated additional funding under the PPP program. Um, and then we have 15 billion for a shutter venue grant, as well as an additional 20 billion for the targeted advance, um, and then some other relief programs as well. And then under the American Rescue Plan, uh, it just rolled out under the Biden administration, the appropriations were again increased by 55 billion to small businesses. And you can see there an additional um, seven, more than 7 billion for PPP loans, um, over 1 billion more for the Shutter Venue Grant, um, 28 and a half billion for uh, the restaurant grant program that will be rolling out, uh, 15 billion more for targeted advance, and then um, 100 million for a community navigator pilot program. So under the Paycheck Protection Program, and this one probably uh, applies to you all the most. Um, so we uh, rolled this out last spring. Um, and uh, we uh, now have a second draw. So we still are offering a first draw, which is the first time a small business owner would um, get a PPP loan. Um, but we're also offering a second draw, meaning uh, a business owner could apply for a second PPP loan. Okay, for the eligible entities under both first and second, you can see there, um, if you're applying for the first time, you have to have 500 employees or less, which is the typical SBA standard for a small business. Um, but if you're applying for a second PPP loan, you have to have 300 employees or less. Okay, and then you can see their partnerships, LLCs, corporations, sole proprietors, independent contractors, self-employed individuals, tribal businesses, ag businesses, nonprofits, et cetera, are all eligible for both the first and second draw loans. Uh, we added in new eligible entities um, through the last two stimulus packages. Actually, it was under the, the one passed in December. Um, we are now covering local newspaper, uh, radio and television stations, as well as destination marketing organizations. Um, and then other 501c3 um, nonprofits and internet publishing organizations. Um, the proceeds for both first and second draw loans can be used for a variety of different purposes. Um, you can see the bold bullet there at the bottom, which is really important for folks to keep in mind looking at uh, full forgiveness of these loans, you'll want to use at least 60% or more for payroll costs um, to receive full forgiveness of the loan. But um, payroll costs can cover, you know, of course, salary and wages, but it also covers vacation, sick leave, severance, health care, retirement benefits, um, group insurance payments, uh, and then there's special rules for self-employed LLCs, partnerships, and agricultural businesses. Um, now, the other 40% can be used for mortgage interest payments, rent utilities, pre-existing debt, interest. Um, you can use these to refinance an idle loan if you received one. Uh, you can use it for operations expenditures, um, property damage, supplier costs, worker protection expenditures and adaptive measures. So if you've um, made some changes to your business uh, to, to um, you know, respond to COVID, then that would be covered under adaptive measures, okay? First draw loans go up to $10 million. Um, the maturity is five years with a 1% interest rate. And, um, the payment deferment is until the borrower obtains loan forgiveness or 10 months out, whichever is earlier. Okay. The second draw PPP loans only go up to 2 million. And keep in mind again, that you have to have 300 employees or less to get a second draw. Uh, again, the maturity rate is five years with a 1% interest rate. Um, 
and this is important for seasonal employers may use any 12 week period from February 15, 2019 um, to a year later in 2020. Uh, and then single corporate gr groups may not get more than 4 million total. Okay. Uh, additional requirements under the second draw, um, of course, you had to have received a first draw loan. Um, use the full amount on eligible expenses as outlined um, prior in the prior slide. Uh, again, have no more than 300 employees and can demonstrate at least a 25% reduction in gross receipts between the same quarters, comparable quarters in 2019 and 2020. So again, you can't look at uh, quarter one, say, in 2019 and compare it to quarter four in 2020. It would have to be the same quarter comparison. Uh, so this is the application process. You're going to want to find a PPP lender here in Utah. Again, um, quite a few of the lenders throughout the state are doing these loans now. Um, but you can go out to our website and there's a lender match out there where you can find a lender um, that is uh, administering these loans. Um, you can also contact, as I said, one of our SBA resource partners. Uh, and again, they provide free counseling. They can walk you through those applications. And again, that's the SBDC or the Small Business Development Center Network or our Women's Business Centers. Um, there are different forms to use for a first draw versus a second draw PPP loan, and uh, you can see it's a 2483, but you have to use the dash SB for the second draw. Um, you'll need to have your payroll documentation ready, uh, your required certifications. Um, you're also going to need to demonstrate your revenue loss uh, for a second draw loan. Um, and then be able to um, issue a loan number. Once you get that loan number, we're able to go into the system and look up the status of your loan. Okay. The economic injury disaster loans, and quite a few of you will, will be eligible for these as well. Um, again, we're using the SBA size standards. So any small business with 500 employees or less, um, Private nonprofit organizations and small egg uh, co-ops are also eligible. Um, the credit elsewhere is still a requirement under the EIDL loans. Um, so businesses need to uh, show that there's no credit elsewhere on these um, versus the PPP, which is different. These loan terms are different than the PPP loan terms. Um, the amount goes up to 500,000. We just increased it. Um, to cover up to 24 months of economic injury, okay? The interest rate is 3.75 for small businesses, 3.75 for nonprofits. So it's a higher interest rate, but the maturity is much longer. It goes for 30 years versus the shorter term on the, on the uh, PPP. And then there's a complete payment deferment for the first year on the idle loan. Um, proceeds can be used fairly broad, um, fixed debts, payroll, accounts payable, and other bills that you may have. Um, but you can't use it to refinance long-term debt. And again, remember I had said that the PPP you can use to refinance your idle, um, and then you would get you would look at forgiveness on that. Um, you have to have an acceptable credit history for EIDL. Again, this is we're pretty strict on this versus the uh, PPP. We're a little more flexible in that regard. Um, we have had quite a few business owners say that they haven't been eligible for the EIDL and they, they, they can't quite figure it out. And we I can actually go into the system and look up and see what the credit history score, the, their credit score was, and let them know whether or not um, it met our threshold. Um, you also have to show that you can repay these loans, and then um, all loans over twenty-five thousand must be secured with available collateral. Okay, so these are uh, payment deferments for our disaster loans, um, and again, this includes the idols. Um, we're extending the payment deferment periods until twenty twenty-two. 
um, for idle loans that were made in calendar year 2020, um, the first payment due date is extended from 12 months to 24 months from the date it's uh, received. And um, if the, the loan was made in 2021, this year, then the first payment uh, due date is extend, extended from 12 months to 18 months from um, the date it was received. Okay, targeted idle advance. I'll just be quick on this um, because this is a very um, sort of, well, it's targeted. Um, the audience for this is a low income communities, okay? And um, what SBA is doing is reaching out to those businesses that had received a grant the last go around or an advance the last go around. They only go up to $10,000, but um, they were based on the number of employees that small businesses had on staff. So say a small business only had three employees on staff, they were only eligible to get 3,000 um, last year. Uh, but what we're doing, what the SBA is doing, is if those small businesses are located in a low-income community, we're giving them the difference. So we're just giving them the additional seven thousand. Um, and so again, you you don't need to do anything in this regard. SBA will be reaching out to those small businesses in the low-income communities um, to to get these advances. Our shuttered venue operator grant, I'll be quick on this. Um, not sure how many of you all would be um, interested in applying for these, but um, we're, as I mentioned, we're getting ready to roll this out on April 8th. And the business types that it covers includes um, live venues, theaters, uh, live performing arts, museums, zoos, aquariums, uh, motion picture theaters, um, businesses that were fully operational on uh, the end of February in 2020 um, with a gross to earn revenue loss of at least 25% from one quarter in 2020 as compared to 2019. Um, they need to demonstrate that they intend to resume operations. Um, and then you can see there the breakdown of uh, FTEs versus um, half-time employees. Um, the first days of our rollout, $2 billion will be set aside for businesses with no more than 50 employees. Um, eligible entities are all listed out there. Uh, that just provides more detail. Um, I won't get into that because I think um, you all are going to supply the slides to, to those that are participating. Okay. An applicant wouldn't qualify uh, if it doesn't have a place of business in the U.S. Um, uh, if they um, have live performances or products of sexual nature, um, they've received more than 10% of their gross revenue in 2019 from the federal government, um, or they own or operate venues or agencies uh, in more than one country or more than 10 states, and they have five affiliates who have already received um, a grant award. Um, or as a museum with affiliates who have uh, received a uh, 10 million in in total. Okay. The amount goes up to 10 million for each individual grant. Um, they can apply for a second grant of up to 50 percent of the first grant amount. Um, and here's the sort of the the breakdown. Um, if if a business was in operation uh, as of January 1st, 2019, the grant amount is 45% of the gross earned revenue in 2019. Um, and if they're in operation after January 1st, 2019, the grant amount is the average monthly gross earned revenue for each month uh, in operation 2019, multiply that by six. Um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to um, reduce the amount of the grant um, for any PPP loan that um, a bit small business owner has already received. And then you can see down below there the, the difference between gross revenue and gross to earn revenue. We just wanted to provide that definition for small business owners. Okay. Um, the, we're we're going to roll this out um, by application and priority. So, we're going to start taking applications April 
dates, uh, that's when the portal will open. First 14 dates, the grants will be awarded uh, to eligible entities that have a 90% or greater revenue loss. Uh, next 14 days will be a 70% or greater uh, revenue loss. And then um, the revenue loss is for um, purposes of priority based on the period from April 1st through December 31st, 2019 and 2020. Um, and then there's some specifics there that you see um, you'll need to have ready when you go and apply for this grant. The um, use of the grants pretty broad in scope and you can see there all the different things that you can use it for payroll, rent, utility, mortgage, uh, worker protection expenditures, et cetera. Um, and then the prohibited expenses is like if you wanna purchase real estate or um, payments on loans generated after February 15, 2020. Okay. Uh, this is just more information on the Shutter Venue Operator Grant. We've already launched a landing page for this. Um, and then we've got um, a webinar coming up tomorrow for um, those that are interested. Okay, restaurant revitalization grants. These have not rolled out yet. Um, the 5 billion of this will be for eligible entities with gross receipts um, during 2019 of not more than 500,000, okay? And then the, the other remaining 23.6 billion will be distributed in an equitable manner to uh, eligible entities of different sizes. We don't have the specifics on this yet. Um, it may roll out similar to the um, Shutter Venue grant um, in terms of priority, we just don't know yet. Um, but you can see there, we do know that within the first 21 days, we're gonna be prioritizing uh, the grants to women controlled or veteran owned um, and disadvantaged small businesses. The covered period for these grants is um, February 15th through December 31st, uh, 2021. Okay, uh, eligible entities. Uh, what's interesting here is, is um, you know, food stands, food trucks, food carts, all of those are eligible to receive these grants. Of course, restaurants and caterers as well. Um, brew pubs, tasting rooms, you know, all of that. Um, ineligible entities though are uh, entities that are um, operated by either state or local governments. Um, if they own or operate more than 20 locations as of uh, March 13th, 2020, um, that if they have a pending application with a shuttered venue grant or a publicly traded entity. Okay, the um, grant awards, um, the maximum is 10 million um, and then with multiple locations, it's 5 million per physical location. Uh, grants will be awarded in terms of the numbers received. Um, and then, like I said, during the first 21 days, we're gonna be prioritizing those. There Again, there may be more specifics on that, but um, we just don't know quite yet. The uh, revenue loss you can see there is equal to the gross receipts during 2020, subtracted from gross receipts in 2019. Um, if an entity is not in operation in all of 2019, then what you need to do is look at the average monthly gross receipts in 2020, uh, multiply that times 12 months, and then subtract the average monthly gross receipts in 2019 times 12 months. If you've opened after December 31st, 2019, it equals expenses incurred minus gross receipts received. And then the losses are reduced by uh, the first and second draw loans, uh, PPP loans, okay? Uh, grant proceeds, again, broad in scope, can be used for all of these different purposes, um, including food and beverage expenses. Um, and then what other, uh, if there's other things that the administrator deems is essential, um, she can also approve that as well, okay? Um, just quickly on our uh, enhancements to um, our lending programs, you can see there are 7A loans. Um, 
the 7A loans increased to 90% um, through October 1st, 2021. Um, in terms of the SBA uh, guarantee, there's no guarantee fee on these anymore or annual fee um, until uh, October 1st. Um, and then our 504 loans, there's some specifics there as well uh, as our microloan, uh, the maturity went from six years to eight years and then intermediates can borrow up to 10 million. Okay, and then um, we, we do uh, have some specifics on our subsidy payments. Existing borrowers will have three more payments made for them by the SBA. Again, this is new. Um, borrowers considered to be in underserved uh, markets will have another five payments made for them. So a total of eight payments made by SBA. Um, SBA will pay the principal interest and fees for loans approved from February 1st, 2021 through September 30th, 2021. Um, only receive payments on one loan approved by the CARES Act. So just, just keep that in mind. That's what we'd be looking at. And then no subsidy for uh, PPP loans. And then just finally here on our resources, um, this is just the contact information for the SBDCs and our um, women's business centers located in the state. Um, and then this next so slide is our contact information. The phone number there at the top is our general phone line um, and our general email inbox. Um, the Office of Disaster Assistance, we wanted to include that in there um, because they administer the uh, economic injury disaster loans as well as the other venue grants. Um, and so, so that information is provided there. Um, but if anyone has any issues with their loans, uh, whether it's a PPP loan or an idle loan or the grants, I have contact information. We do all, all of us on staff have contact information, with all of our lenders, as well as leadership in the Office of Disaster Assistance. So don't hesitate to reach out to us if, if you have any questions. Okay, and with that, I think we'll open it up for Q&A. Well, that was fantastic. Thank you, uh, Marla. I really appreciate the comprehensive coverage of all of the new programs and then existing programs. Um, while well, people are getting their courage up to ask questions, I'll kick off with when you say nonprofit, have they included any 501c6s or is it only 501c3s? Um, originally, it was only 501c3s. Uh, with the Economic Aid Act, they added 501c6s like chambers and other things. And with this most recent American Rescue Plan, they've added all 501Cs, period. Oh, oh, wow. That's a big difference. Mm -hmm. Yep. Fantastic. So anyone else have some questions? Yeah, can, uh, this is Mike Rosberg. Um, could, could you restate the extensions that, um, that they've made for the first one, I guess? I understand it's what pushed out to May. Yeah, so to apply for PPP loans, you have until May 31st. Um, it's passed both houses of Congress. President will sign it tomorrow, and then we'll process those through June. Yeah. And it previously was March 31st, right? So it's it's a really nice extension to get yeah, the application. To get the application. Yeah, that's that. Yeah. Is the is the May is the, is the May thirty first also, also the day for uh, the PPP, for, uh, the PPP second, second loan? Second loan. Yes. 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 First or second loan. First or second loan. Uh, I have a question regarding uh, forgiveness process. We do have a loan that's above two million dollars, and uh, we did borrow from a, a bank here in Virginia, actually in Virginia, not in Utah. Uh, they're, they're giving us a indication that SBA has not reviewed or has not provided any yes or no in any of those forgiveness. Can you kind of go through a larger size loan forgiveness process for the 
SBA and what the status of those are? Well, I mean, we do know that we are auditing all of those. Uh, over two million. Uh, we know also that they backlogged a little bit um, in our servicing center. Uh, if if you have a specific question about that, maybe email us and we'll have one of our lender relations specialists check with the servicing center to kind of maybe see if they can get a status update on that. It's actually more of a, we just submitted our final paperwork to our bank about a week ago, but they're, they're the one who's kind of telling us that none of their clients so far has either gotten yes or no in any of their loans. So it's just more general question than my specific case. Okay, and we don't know the specific process within the center. We just know that they, it's taking them a long time. There's millions of these forgiveness applications. And of course, the over 2 million, there is a little more auditing that they do on those. Any other questions out there? We have recorded this and we will send out a link to the recording if you want to hear it again or share it within your company. Again, we're looking forward to what? developing our relationship with um, SBA. Uh, Dustin, did you have a question? Yeah, so, and I may have um, just not heard clearly, but on the grants, are those the equivalent of a loan or is that grant money that's not repayable? So, so if it's a grant, then it does not have to be repaid. It's not a loan. So these grants are, are, are money given to you. And for example, our PPP loans, they are loans initially, but if you use the proceeds properly and give forgiveness, then it's almost the equivalent of a grant. Excellent, thank you. Well, I think that we seem to have wrapped up our questions again. Thank you for the update and we look forward to future sessions with uh, SBA explaining how many different support programs there are for small businesses here in Utah. So with that, I think we'll conclude this again. JT, thank you for helping out as I was racing in the door. <laughs> I appreciate it and uh, thank you for all your participation. Thank you, Thank you.